This video was brought to you by Technically Not a Technician, and in today's video, we'll be talking about the 1991, Konami published arcade game Sunset Riders. This game is a popular run and gun video game that has a bit of a following. In Sunset Riders, a player assumes the role of a bounty hunter in the American Old West, tasked with claiming the rewards on offer for various outlaws. Two-player and four-player versions of the coin-op game were released. The Mega Drive, Genesis and Super Nintendo Entertainment System home console versions of Sunset Riders were both well received upon their respective 1992 and 1993 releases. Hamster Corporation's arcade archives lineup on the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch features an emulated version of the arcade original. Set in a fantastical interpretation of the American Old West, the game follows four bounty hunters, Steve, Billy Cool, Bob, and Cormano Wild, as they compete for prizes for killing the most wanted criminals in the region. The players are presented with a wanted poster depicting the criminal they must eventually encounter at the beginning of each act. The action in Sunset Riders is comparable to those of Contra and Vendetta. This first-person shooter can support two or four players locally at once, depending on the specific release. The two-player mode allows each player to select one of the four bounty hunters to players at the outset, while the four-player mode assigns each player a different set of controls for their respective character. Cormano employs a double-barrel shotgun, while Steve and Billy use revolvers. Bob has a rifle, you can move and aim with an eight-way joystick, and fire and leap with their respective buttons. To evade enemy attacks, the player can slide and hop across levels. The player must work through eight levels and overcome more difficult boss characters as they eliminate a band of criminals. When more than one player is involved, the bonus for beating a stage boss goes to whoever does the greatest damage to the boss. Only one stage takes place on a moving train, while the other six must be completed on foot or horseback. Following the second and fifth levels, a bonus minigame is played in which the player can earn more points by shooting outlaws as they appear. The game becomes progressively more challenging after the initial eight levels have been completed. Doorways, beating specific bandits carrying bags, and opening sacks on the ground all grant access to power-ups and additional goodies, respectively. A gold sheriff's badge may be purchased for unlimited bullets and a silver one can be purchased for a second gun. The use of both enhancements is permitted. The player also has access to mounted Gatling guns, which are only available in the game's final stage, as well as rocks, barrels, and torches that can be dropped from above to deal damage to foes. If Cormano is still alive when the boss of the fifth stage is defeated, he will pick up the boss's sombrero and wear it for the rest of the game as part of an Easter egg. When the player takes damage from an enemy attack, is caught in a fire or explosion, gets hit by a rock or obstacle, or gets trampled by bulls, they lose a life. Any bonuses a player has earned are also nullified. When a player loses their last life, they have a short window of time to reload the game by adding more credits before they are taken to the game over screen. The game's four playable bounty hunters are after the prizes for killing the most wanted criminals in the Wild West. Billy is a revolver-toting bounty hunter with a rustic southern drawl. Steve, another bounty hunter, uses revolvers like Billy does, albeit his shots look to be more powerful. Bob is a Southern American accented bounty hunter who uses a rifle. Cormano is a Mexican poncho wearing, sombrero toting bounty hunter who uses a double barreled shotgun with a broad shot pattern. After defeating El Greco, he dons the latter's signature red sombrero. Only Billy and Cormano can be controlled in the Sega Genesis version. The game's outlaws serve as the game's recurring bosses, with Richard Rose serving as the game's final boss. Rich and avaricious, Simon Greedwell is the first stage boss. While giving orders to his men, he brandishes a shotgun and prepares to fire at the bounty hunters. He requested to be buried with his wealth. Hawkeye Hank Hatfield is the second stage's leader and a wealthy bandit who can shoot a gun with one hand. He tried to kill the bounty hunters, but they were able to neutralize him. Muscular and riding an armored steed, Dark Horse is a notorious bandit. The third act supervisor reports to him. When the bounty hunters have finished with him, his armored horse will take off with his body. The Smith brothers are a ragtag band of outlaw siblings who wreak mayhem in the tavern owned by a stunning woman. They are the stage bosses you face after defeating Dark Horse in the fourth level. After the brothers are taken care of, the bounty hunters watch a Cancan performance by three gorgeous women, who then spill the beans on Richard Rose and his three goons. The boss of the fifth level is a Mexican outlaw named El Greco, who works for Richard Rose. He's armed with a shield and a whip. 
El Greco discards his crimson Mexican sombrero after the bounty hunters have rendered him harmless. If Cormano is the target of a prank, he will steal the hat and wear it for the rest of the game. Native American tribe chief and knife-throwing expert Chief Scalpum is the sixth stage antagonist and one of Richard Rose's underlings. Despite his best efforts, the bounty hunters manage to neutralize him. However, they eventually let him go after hearing his little sister beg him to spare him because he was only obeying Richard's orders. Scalpum is the third stage boss in the Sega Genesis port. Due to censorship concerns, the SNES port of the game renamed Scalpum to Wigwam. Paco Loco, a burly bandit armed with a Gatling rifle, is the stage 7 boss and one of Richard Rose's goons. His final words before being killed by the bounty hunters are, Asta la bye bye. Reference to the iconic line spoken by the T-800 in the second Terminator film, released in 1991. Paco Loco is the second stage boss in the Sega Genesis port. Sir Richard Rose is the series' major antagonist and the game's final boss. He is a wealthy and dapper outlaw. He is a skilled gunslinger, able to fire a handgun with one hand while simultaneously exhibiting impressive speed and dexterity. After his initial death, he discloses that he's wearing a metal plate over his heart to protect himself. After the second act, the bounty hunters have finally neutralized him, as represented by an image of a single rose being stomped out. He is the final boss of the game's fourth and final stage in the Sega Genesis version. The original release date for the arcade game in Japan was July 9, 1991. At the Las Vegas Amusement and Music Operators Association trade show in September 1991, Sunset Riders was first shown to the North American public. In October of 1991, Sunset Riders was released in arcades around the world. The arcade version was ported to two home platforms two years later. Only in North America and Europe could one get a home version. I want to thank you for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please help me beat the YouTube algorithm by giving this video a like, leaving a comment, sharing this video with a friend, and if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks.